Tuscaloosa Toyota proudly presents Alabama quarterback, played under Nick Saban and color analyst for the Alabama Crimson Tide. John Parker Wilson, I hope you're doing good, man. Welcome into the game in T-Town. Doing great. How are things up in Tuscaloosa? Well, we're down to, let me let me look right here. It's uh, 23, no, no, 22 and a half hours away from spring football here in T-Town. Man, you just talking about how time flies. I feel like it was just yesterday we were leaving San Francisco and, you know, now you got the chance to start back spring training to turn the page and to get ready for next year. So there's a, a, a lot of emotion with these guys right now. I know we got a lot of rookies on campus that graduated high school, you know, a few months ago and are now on campus. So it's a, it's a fun, it's a fun time of year where you can really turn the page and get ready for next year. You know, Coach Saban always talks about forming identity as a team and, um, it's going to start tomorrow. It really started back in the fourth quarter program when we're at, when they're out, you know, running around and getting in shape, and and that's where it starts. And this is a it's, this is a big part. This is where jobs are won and lost, and it, and it all starts tomorrow. All right, I want to walk you back to the spring of two thousand seven, Nick Saban's first spring practice on the eve or a couple of days before. You really don't know what to expect. What was the anxiety level going out for the first time? where you're trying to prove to a head coach, hey, I'm worthy of this first string uh, rep. I'm worthy of this position. What is it like going into the unknown of spring football with Nick Saban? Oh, man, it, it's tough. It, because, you know, especially for, for the young guys and, and, the, and the guys that are there with Coach Saban the first time, you really have no idea what to expect. I mean, you're going out there, you're playing against some of the best football players in the entire world, and you've got to go out and not only play well, but play better than the guy next to you so you can go out and earn a job and you know it's it's stressful it's anxious but man it's exciting to be able to put on that helmet to put on the path to go out there to walk on the field and knowing that you get a chance to be a part of something special the tradition that Alabama has is unbelievable and as a player to be able to be a part of that for me it was exciting go out there you know, it makes you work a little bit harder to run a little bit extra on those wind spreads and they go down a little deeper. So it was, uh, it was fun. And if, for most of the guys, it's going to be fun. You get some guys that stress out more than others, but for the most part, you know, there's, you're not playing a game. It's just go out there, try to get better at what you do and try to become a better ball player and get ready for at the end of the day, you know, the kickoff in the fall. John Parker, were you one of the guys, certainly you led by example, but were you one of the vocal guys on the team? Uh, to a, to an extent, you know, I, I think, you know, the quarterback position is a little bit different where you, like it or not, you have to be vocal. Uh, you have to be up there. You're the one that everybody looks to in the huddle and, and on the sidelines and in the locker room. So you get really no choice except to speak up when need, when times need to be spoke up, when you needed to speak up. Definitely leading by example is part of it. But you've got to have, and every team's got to have, at least one or two guys on offense and one or two guys on defense that's not scared to really, you know, be a little bit controversial sometimes when you think they need to be addressed. That that good teams have to have that in order to be successful because it, the coaches can't do it all. The coaches can't be the only voices that they hear. It takes some players to step up. And, you know, every year is different. Every year it's going to be somebody different. Two of the quarterback who's been there, been a long time since we've known who the quarterback was going to be going into the spring and going into camp. Obviously, we know it's going to be two, but you know, usually you look at the center, so there's going to be a new body there at that position. Running back's going to be some new bodies. Obviously, Najee's coming back, but Damian was a very vocal guy. If you look at the offensive side of the ball, then um, you know, defense is still trying to find out leader also. So it's it's a big part of the of the spring of not only earning position, but but figuring out who are going to be those leaders throughout the team. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, and I think to watch spring football. John Parker, I, I say this every year, and maybe it's just the off season, but when I get to spring football, I cannot think of the number of questions that, not that I have, they're not like gigantic questions, but it's like the unknowns and the competition. Backup quarterback, I think we could spend the next 15 minutes of who's going to develop there. Certainly Mac Jones is a guy that has a lot of experience, but you got a lot of talent behind him that's going to be competing for that backup role. You could start there. You go offensive line. You could go middle linebacker. You could go place kicker. I mean, there is like a, a lot of que- new coaching staff, how these guys are going to work, expectations of getting to know these guys. 
I mean, there's a lot of fun conversations around the spring football uh, here in Tuscaloosa. God, you just brought up a lot. I mean, that was fun just hearing you talk about just the questions because there there are a lot of unknowns. And when we get into training camp, things are much more defined because of what we're going through right now. The A-Day game is obviously what everybody sees and what everybody looks to. And it's visible. It's on TV. We can all go watch and see it. But I'm telling you, each one of these practices, I don't know how many you get now. It's 15 or so. Yep. Every practice you get is is just as big as the A-Day game because – because you you are trying to go out there and answer all those questions for Coach David, coaches included. Because like you said, there's a there's a lot of new spaces on the coaching staff too. So you go out there, and man, I can remember you know you have the best day ever, and you think you know you're the king of the world, and then the next day you throw a couple interceptions, or you if you're a receiver, you know you drop a couple of balls. The emotions are ups and downs, and you just gotta be able to put your head down and weather through it. Because you look back. And it seems like you know one practice is such a big deal, but you got to be able to put put it together throughout the life of spring, and it is important. I mean, the final jobs are going to be won in the spring, but you're you know you're putting yourself in that position to be able to go out there and do it in the fall. And it's I mean, this is as important as it gets for a football team: the development, the character, the leadership, the identity. I mean, this is this is as good as it gets. Well, and I think the one thing that that I always like to see in spring. It's the transformation. I don't know how Scott Cochran does it. I don't know if he has magic dust over there and they just go around sprinkling it on. But it seems like from January the 15th to whatever, March, early couple of uh, days, normally it's around the 9th, the 10th, something like that. It's amazing the transformation that they are able to make in six, seven weeks. The body, the weight. I mean, look at Tua Tonga Valoa. He's up to 230 pounds. Uh, Looking at players, it's not uncommon to see 15, 20 pounds of just bulk added to these guys. And and that's always fun to see uh, the transformation side that Scott Cochran and that fourth quarter program works. Oh, you're not lying. I mean, the pictures when these guys get there as freshmen, and they, you know, they're always in Coach Cochran's office right when they get done and they get their shirts off and they're flexing. Scary. These guys are huge. <laughs> they're mean. They're built. But, you know, he's going to get down to a science. Now, Cochran's been there for a long time. He knows what he's doing. He's as integral to the coaching staff as there anybody else is because he's with them when a lot of the coaches can't be, the nutrition they put in these guys. And also, I don't want to set the players short either of buying in, of being able to do that, of going out there and actually putting in the work because it's not easy. I'm telling you, the, the amount of – to put on that weight and the amount of work they're putting in, I mean, you've got to eat so much when, you know, it's just uncomfortable to put food in your body. you got to you got to do it the right way. but. But to have you gotta have the drive and determination. If not, you get shuffled to the side pretty quickly. And the guys who emerge are those ones who just have the hunger to get better. And that's what you know, that that's the that's the culture we've got right now of just to drive to get better. The standard, the bar has been set so high. And, you know, these guys continue to do it year after year. You know, and I, I sit here and I'm looking at the depth chart. Well, hold on, hold on. Nick Saban better not hear me saying that. Uh, coach, it's a depth chart from the Clemson game, and it's just me taking a, a black line and marking out the players that are no longer here, and I'm just kind of moving the guys up. Uh, but it, but it's kind of fun to sit there and watch the player that's been patient. He came here as a five-star. He's had to sit behind, you know, All-American, 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 and now he's got his chance to go, okay, now I can step into that role. Uh, you, you look at players and, and the patience. I can imagine where well, that's a challenge, but now's the opportunity. Next 15 days, show this new coaching staff or some of the new coaches what I'm capable of. Might have lost John Parker Wilson there for just a couple of seconds. Hey, uh, I'm back. I'm back. Yep. Okay. The, the patience that you're talking about is exactly it because, I mean, look at Quentin Williams. He, he redshirted. Sure. Think about that. He's going to be possibly the number one pick. And there were so many good guys in front of him that he had the red shirt. And you can go one or two ways with that. You can either say, I'm going to work my butt off and go get the first-team offensive line and try to get as good as I can. Make the guy in front of me better, but I'm going to try to get as good as I can. Or you can go the other route. Quinnen said, okay, I'm going to take this first year to get really good. Played a little bit as freshman year and then is one of the best defensive linemen in the country and that's what it takes of, of being good you know 
if you poll any anybody that's playing in NFL from Alabama, they say, "What's the difference between Alabama and anywhere else?" It's that you practice day in and day out against five star studs. And if you're if you're going to get better, you got to go out there and beat them. That's what it's all about. And for the young guys, that's what I'm telling them: is just put your head down and work. That's at the end of the day. That's all you can do. That's the only thing that you can control is your attitude and your work ethic. And for the most part, our guys are doing it. And that's why Coach Saban's been able to sustain this thing for over a decade now. John Parker, do you do you, you press? Is this the time to press as a player, or do you you still try to be a little bit conservative? I mean, if you're a backup quarterback and you know that you're trying to uh, fit in that number two role, uh, do you find yourself pressing? I, do you have a little bit more flexibility in the spring, or no, 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 no? Don't take chances with Nick Saban. Yeah, it's a fine line. It really is. You got because quarterback. If you go to any coach Saban's practice, it's you've got to protect the ball. That's the number one thing is you can't throw interceptions. So there's a fine line between trying to fit it in that window and somebody intercepting it. So you've got to take calculated chances. I think that's kind of the word that I would use is, is you've got to be calculated. You've got to know what you're doing and know when to take chances. There's times that that is a good decision. And, and if you throw a pick, it's not going to be the worst thing in the world. But you've got to, to be – really efficient in what you're doing. And especially during practices, bad things are going to happen. You're going to throw picks. You're going to fumble the ball. Defensive backs are going to bust coverages and be in the wrong spot. But it's also a coachable moment because how do you handle it? I mean, how do you how do you bounce back from it? It happens during a football game. You get down. You do something wrong. You can't let it affect you, and you got to be able to go to win the game. So it, it is, it, it's a tough thing of saying, okay, I, I find myself second or third on the depth chart. Um, and how how do I make those strides? You know, it, it, you, you just got to be very smart and be very efficient about your position. What does Coach Saban say when you throw an interception? Like, like I mean, I know you cannot share everything, but but what what is that conversation? Because we always see, you know, the quarterback coming off the field, you know, if he's if he's throwing an interception in practice, what does Coach Saban do? Is is he more of an emotional guy? Is he lifts you up? Or is he asking what you see? I mean, what, what, does, what does Coach Saban say? Uh, when you make that unfortunate mistake, it's never good. Okay, <laughs> okay, it's, ne- it's never a good situation because it's really at the end of the day you, you got to protect the ball. That's the number one goal. That's the number one job you've got as a quarterback is protect the ball. And when you don't do that, it, bad things happen. And yeah, there's a little bit of what you see. And, and he's the, the thing I loved about Coach Saban and being a defensive guy is helping me to understand what they were trying to do. Okay, you might have seen this wrong, but here's here's the way I look at it as a defensive guy. So I love that chemistry that we had of being able to figure things out. Now, he's got it, he does it in a different way, and, and, you know, I loved it. I loved, you know, it's, it's not okay to throw an interception, and it never should be, you know, you get a pat on the butt because you did that. So let's go out there and tell you that, let's not do that again. And, and look, we see, everybody sees him on TV. When you throw a pick, it's just, it's, it's bad news, so we try to avoid that as much as possible. Yeah, but now let's be honest here, okay? That's Nick Saban's defense. That's his baby over there. When you torch his defense and you've just had a great series, do you get a bigger butt chewing or an interception when you torch his defense or an interception? No, the, the, so when you tor- when you when you get out of defense, and it's always fun for the offense to get out the defense because especially early on, they're always a little step ahead. It's, it's, they're a step ahead of the offense. It just takes longer for the chemistry. So when he is really getting after the defense, we would we would love it. You know, Antoine Caldwell and I, we would we would high five when when he's not yelling at us and he was getting on the defense. That's a good day when the offense, you know, is beating the defense and he's over on that tether ball chewing them out. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. John Parker, let's talk about Tuscaloosa Toyota. Certainly, we're talking about championships. Alabama's number one volume Toyota certified dealer. Scott Peoples and an amazing staff. Talk about the Tundra in the vehicle that you drive every single day. That's it. We got, you know, the best over there at the Malmore building getting ready for practice tomorrow. But down on Scotland Boulevard, Scott Peoples, Jeff Baker, their staff, they're Alabama's number one volume Toyota dealer. It's the car buying process simplified. There's no surprises, no hassles. You get the best price up front first. It's one price, one place. A lot of the cars right now are coming in, the 2020 Toyota Corolla, getting ready to get there, 0% financing on the Tacomas. 0% 0% financing on the Camrys. So many options there. You can go on their website, TuscaloosaToyota.com, to see the full inventory, see what they got, new cars, used cars. Don't forget, 
three-day return policy. If you buy something you don't like it, they're going to make sure you're in the right fit. So check them out at TuscaloosaToyota.com. And that is John Parker Wilson, color analyst for the Alabama Crimson Tide, former Nick Saban quarterback here at the University of Alabama. John Parker, have an amazing weekend, my friend. Thank you so much for being a part of the show. Roll Tide, brother.